Good afternoon. My name is Hae Sun Jung. I'm an architect and also urban researcher in Chicago. Today I'll talk about my research on arts, bohemia, and cultural placemaking. So this is timeline showing the, the change of urban ideology with different historical events over two centuries in the past. One simple takeaway from this timeline is that cities are actually shifting their values and attention from car-oriented to more pedestrian-friendly and transit-oriented. So my main research question is, what is the role of cultural form in sustainable urban development? In the first part, I'll talk about the, the relationship between the bohemia and alternative transportation use. In the second part, I'll talk about cafes and coffee shops as place of cultural innovation. So past scholars have mostly focused on the role of urban form, density, and diversity of built environment on the choice of um, walking, bicycle, and public transportation. However, the role of culture form, subculture, the way of life, tastes, and values has rarely been studied. So in my research, I use Bohemia as culture form. So in a comparative and global manner, I redefined the Bohemia in terms of five characteristics. So Bohemia involved in art and music industry, just we know that um, a lot of painters, writers, and musicians and like Balzac, Baudelaire, or Picasso, they um, initiated the Bohemian liberal lifestyle in 19th century Paris, which still remains today's Bohemian culture. Also, Bohemians tend to have more non-hierarchical attitude, which we see the rise of egalitarianism and social movement. Um, critical mass bicycling group is a good example of egalitarianism. Um, Bohemians also tend to wear more unconventional clothing style, such as tattoo, piercing, or dyed hair, which can be um, measured more through a qualitative method. Also, Bohemians um, have open-minded and also higher tolerance to diversity like LGBT, ethnic minorities, or income diversity. And lastly, Bohemians, um, they also involve in creative industries like um, entrepreneurship, startup companies, as we see the rise of um, co-working spaces like WeWork. So statistically, uh, Bohemia is highly correlated with cafes, nightclubs, used bookstore, tattoo parlor, art galleries, um, and other small-scale um, amenities. So as Professor Clark mentioned, uh, we have hundreds of different amenities collected from yellow pages and census BZIP. And then we codify those amenities into 15 census dimensions, basically representing different characteristics of neighborhood. So the unit of our analysis is zip code for US, commune for France, dome for Korea, and other um, geographic unit for other countries as well. So in the US, each zip code has own score on 15 dimensions. So in the scenescape book, we have ideal typical bohemian scene. Basically, um, sets self-expression and transgression as two strong bohemian dimensions. And I adopt police method to measure the bohemian score, which basically measures the distance between this ideal bohemian score and actual 15 scenes dimension scores. And when you inverse this um, distance, you actually measure how it close to the ideal bohemian scene. So my research compares three different cities, um, Chicago, Paris, and Seoul, where I used to live and work. And also I do comparison of their country level as well. So using the Blitz method, I have Bohemian score of these three cities. As you can see, Chicago Bohemian score is higher and concentrated, um, whereas Paris and Seoul have about the same median score, but Paris has larger deviation, meaning that there is larger contrast between high and low bo Bohemia. So I created um, Bohemia maps for Chicago, Paris, and Seoul. So this is for Chicago. Um, as you can see, high Bohemians are located in the north side and northwest side, um, such as Lakeview, well known for large LGBT community around the Boys Town. Um, also, we have Wicker Park, Logan Square, also famous of Neo Bohemia by Richard Lloyd. Um, also, uh, Ravenswood is highly ranked as Bohemian. 
Um, how about the alternative commuting choice? So this shows um, non. Um, this shows the alternative commuting choice, metro ridership, and housing density through information together. So although um, highest metro ridership is in the loop area, uh, we see that Lakeview and some of Bohemian neighborhoods are um, highly bo Bohemian, but also 50% of walking, bicycle, and the transit commuting. Also, uh, for Paris, we see more Bohemians are um, clustered around the northeast part of the city near um, 10, 11th arrondissement, um, 18th arrondissement near Montmartre, uh, plus Tete is traditional area for street art. Uh, Belleville uh, near 20th arrondissement, uh, which is more newer area for artists and immigrants uh, with a lower rent. Um, so when we compare these two maps in Paris, we see more overlap between the Bohemia and alternative transportation use. So place near Montmartre, Belleville, or Hepublic are strong Bohemian with more than 80% of um, alternative commuting choice. Um, in case of Seoul, some areas in Gangnam um, also have um, high Bohemian score due to institutional uh, large art center. More independent artists or amateur musicians, they are found in the Hongdae or Jongno near university campus, um, north of Han River. Um, so Gangnam is a relatively affluent area. So um, it's also, uh, it shows consistent relationship between um, the Bohemian and alternative commuting choice. So north of Han River, Hongdae, Insadong, and Myeongdong, um, all north of Han River actually have 60% um, of walking bicycle and transit and 80,000 daily metro riders. So expanding this into a um, large set of national level irrigations, I tested the urban form and the cultural form uh, on the dependent variable of alternative commuting choice and the ridership. And I controlled for um, demographic variables, including population, income, median rent, education, um, and race. So I'll skip the regression table here, but the main finding I have is that density and diversity of physical environment are still significant in the choice of walking, bicycle, and transit. What's new here is the role of art and bohemia. So more bohemia, I find more bicycle and transit significant in US and France. And more artists and art establishment, I found more walking consistent in Seoul and entire Korea. More Bohemia in Paris, um, as actually it's in Grand Body, and art establishment in Seoul, Chicago find more um, rail ridership. So my current research um, is really focused on the cafes and coffee houses as place of cultural innovation. Um, Habermas talked about coffee house in England and tea salons in France in 18th century became a source of social integration and political mobilization beyond utilitarian place. Also, we know that Oldenburg talked about cafes, bookstores, taverns, bars, those places, they bring people together as a third place. Um, so using the census definition of cafe data, um, I compare Chicago, Paris, and Seoul um, on the total number of cafes and also Starbucks. So in Paris, there are about 500 cafes. In Paris, about 1,400. Um, in Seoul, there are 13,000 cafes. And also in terms of the Starbucks, uh, Chicago, um, Starbucks accounts for about 30%. Um, Paris accounts for Paris Starbucks account for about 3% of whole um, coffee shops and Seoul um, also accounts for only 2% of the whole uh, cafes. So I continue to see the correlation between the cafes and the 15 since dimension as well as demographic variables. Um, so across the three countries of US, France, and Korea, I see that Bohemian score, self-expression, and corporatism are all significant and positive uh, variable with cafes. And specific to US, uh, cafes actually have higher correlation with the transgression and ethnicity, whereas these dimensions are not uh, sig significant or negative in France or Korea. 
Um, opposite from this, in France, cafes are positively correlated with the formality, whereas it's not in two other countries. Um, also, uh, interesting thing is that the traditionalism and neighborliness are actually negatively correlated or insignificant with cafes in all three countries. So this also indicates that cafes, the location of cafes are majorly concentrated, the large metro areas um, or the um, urban settings rather than closed small communities in the rural context. So what's around the cafes in the US? Um, this shows the correlation between cafes and um, different types of amenities at the zip code level. Um, so across this country, um, bakeries, bookstore, health club, tech industries, art amenities, uh, like art galleries or commercial art, uh, music store, grocery store, bookstore, these are um, highly correlated with cafes um, in the zip code. So that means that these amenities tend to be located with more cafes um, in the same zip code. So a similar method for uh, cafes, so this shows the map of number of cafes in Chicago. Uh, Street Reveal has the highest number, 46 cafes. Lincoln Square um, and Lakeview also have more than 30 cafes. Um, cafe scene in Paris is somewhat similar to the Bohemian map, um, plus the Latin Quarter um, and the Saint-Germain-des-Prés area. Uh, well known for the cafe street traditionally. So the 11th Aung de Smong near Scanning Sang Makdang, there are a lot of new nightclubs, cafes, or music clubs converted from the warehouses. So this also indicates that. Um, in Seoul, Gangnam um, has the most number, which has um, 1729 cafes. Uh, Mapo near the Hongik University campus and Jongno also have um, more than thousand cafes. So what's notable here is the dramatic uh, rise of cafes in Seoul. Um, over the last 15 years, coffee market in Seoul and also entire Korea has been skyrocketed. So in 2002, there were about 700 cafes in Seoul. And as you can see, in, as of 2017, there are more than 15,000 cafes. Um, also, in terms of franchise coffee shop, there is also a dramatic increase, but the total number, uh, we can see the, um, the increase very rapidly. So there is a survey conducted in 2016 asking people about what is the reason you're going to cafe and how often do you go to cafe, who are you going to cafe with, um, and these two are one of the survey results. Um, so 62% of uh, people said that they go to cafe more than one to three times a month. And in terms of the main reason visiting for a cafe, 40% said that uh, they go to cafe to socialize with others. 30% um, about 30% said that they go there to have coffee and drink more as you know a basic reason and 8% said that study, read, or use the laptop, uh, pretty much common scene these days. Um, also, they go to cafe to have business meeting um, as 7%. Um, earlier this year, there was interesting survey asking about what type of hybrid or eccentric cafes have you been to? And the people said that they have been to a comic cafe or pet cafe, like dog cafe or raccoon cafe, um, <laughs> fortune telling cafe, because people, they are struggling with getting a job um, or, you know, like stressed out of their life. So yeah, so fortune telling cafe is very popular in game cafe um, or cinema cafe. So they said that they were highly satisfied and had fun there. Um, so in terms of number, the cafe are, cafes are pretty much oversaturated um, all around the city. Um, the concentration of cafes are typically seen in the complex mall um, around or inside the metro station, inside the department store, um, terminal, or the ground level of residential um, office buildings. So I'll briefly talk about Iksandong as a uh, case study of newer Bohemian uh, cafe street. So Iksandong um, is in Jongno area. Uh, Jongno has been a historic heart of the city over uh, more than 600 years in, in Korea. 
So um, Iksandong is uh, surrounded by a lot of traditional historic palaces, um, shrined, um, some of traditional Korean houses, as well as a lot of corporate offices and headquarters. So this um, bird eye's view, you can see that uh, the surrounding is pretty much overdeveloped with the high rises and headquarters. But this area uh, within the white line, this is Iksandong Hanok village. Um, so this has been kind of unmaintained and neglected um, historic traditional area. Uh, people lived there, but um, nobody had uh, paid attention there. So um, this Iksandong Hanok village has about 121 Hanoks built in 1920s. So Hanok means uh, this traditional Korean house, one of the traditional Korean architecture styles that use the wooden structure with a courtyard in the middle of each housing unit. So what's special about this Hanok village was that in the earlier century, Hanok used to be for wealthier or um, bourgeois class in Korea. But during the Japanese colonial era, there was a huge housing shortage crisis for Korean working class. So the modern developer um, in Korea, he suggested to build this for Korean working class people. So because it was for working class, um, he reduced the size of the housing unit and he wanted to make it more efficient. So he uh, made the fusion of a tradition and modern materials uh, for this Hanuk village. So um, as the living condition became poor and old, some of residents, they said that, oh, I don't, I don't want to live here anymore because, you know, um, not, not enough heat here or it's too cold or it's too old. So they, they formed a committee and saying that we want to demolish this Hanuk village and build new high rise for hotels, residential um, or other retail complex. Um, and in 2014, City of Seoul actually canceled this plan uh, because they believed that this place has much worth to preserve its historic heritage. So since then, a lot of residents left and moved to other places and their Hanoks became empty. So after that, um, empty Hanoks, um, there were a lot of empty Hanoks and artists, entrepreneurs or small business owners, they started to move in this place and they actually renovated empty Hanoks into more contemporary cafes, restaurants and bars. Um, so their photos became really popular on social media like Instagram, Facebook or their personal blogs. So each dimension of this um, Hanok is about 10 by 15 meter and the, each street alleyway is about two to three meters only. So there is no cars uh, fit in. Or, so people actually have to go there to experience the neighborhood because there is no Google Street View. So this area became much more commercialized over two, three years. So before uh, 2014, most of the buildings uh, were for residential use, although this area is officially zoned as a commercial area. Um, and in 2016, half of the building use became uh, more commercialized with the restaurant, cafe, bars, or uh, tradition related amenities um, and guest houses. So conversion of their Hanoks into contemporary cafes and restaurants um, shows a hybrid architecture and materiality. So they preserve the old streetscape, um, including the pavement, as well as the wooden structure, columns and beams. Uh, but then they added um, this new skylight, transparent skylight, which provides the new visual connection while, um, while they keep the courtyard space programmatic and uh, convivial. So they also um, posted different uh, advertisements about the art and live performance so people can know about um, the information about the art and culture events. Um, and also some of the cafes, restaurants, they show the variation of materials, uh, old and new, mix of old and new. So they purposely reused the roof tile as a facade material and they mixed with a uh, full height glass window and aluminum panel um, showing the hybrid of tradition and modernism. 
and they inside the cafe space they preserve this traditional elevated wooden floor which basically connects to um, indoor tea rooms so people can sit on or lean on there so there is a continuous bottom-up and top-down effort to preserve and protect this area from the gentrification so artists, they um, stay there in the artist live work studio while they renovate and decorate the public space. Um, and the city of Seoul actually announced a new plan for this Iksandong Hanok village this year. So they designate this place as official Hanok village. And also they will only allow five, uh, less than five story building on the major street. So that means there will be no high-rise construction in this Hanok village. And they prohibit, uh, prohibit franchise or corporate business, so only local business can come in. Um, also, they will implement more tradition-related programs like tea ceremony or participation in Korean games and stuff. Um, also, they will subsidize um, this han renovation for these Hanoks and also they um, have this mutual contract between the owner and tenants to, um, to have the rent um, at the, uh, uh, only go up to the certain limit so they can protect this area from um, drastic uh, gentrification. So my summary based on the research is that uh, we should pay more attention to abandoned space. So abandoned space can include the vacant lots and buildings, but also it can include the historic landmarks. Just like uh, south side of Chicago, there are a lot of landmarks unused or unattended. So it became a source of uh, crimes. So we should um, utilize those uh, places as well. Also, as I showed in the survey earlier, uh, we should think about uh, hybrid of programs. So not just cafes, but cafe plus something else. Uh, it can be book cafe, gallery cafe, pet cafe, or a flower cafe. So in the Wicker Park, there is a book cafe called the Volumes Cafe. Um, also in the Washington Park, just a couple blocks away from the University of Chicago, there is a cafe bookstore called Bing, um, designed by Esther Gates. Um, also, we should think about the streetscape and transit accessibility, uh, more design the surrounding of cafe street in the human scale. Um, also, social media is important. As I said, um, it can replace or add as a new source of data. Uh, and it can, we can analyze the social media data to understand the customer's trend. Um, also, art and culture should be um, integrated in the cafe and restaurants. Um, so street art, community engagement for different ethnicity and social political integration as Habermas described. Um, so if Cento 606 in Bucktown neighborhood in Chicago, they have these murals on the facade of cafe building and that facade actually faces towards the uh, 606 Park. So people go there to take photograph of these murals and go to cafe at the same time. Um, in Paris, there are a lot of cases for urban revitalization using the art. Puang um, Ifime near Gennep uh, Sang Makdang is the case. Uh, it used to be an abandoned warehouse and they converted into uh, bars, restaurants, cafes, nightclub, as well as artists live work exhibition space. Um, also, we should have better so public support uh, to control the rent and also consider better zoning regulation. One snapshot of my uh, publication with Emily uh, this year was uh, about the main street in Chicago. So uh, I will skip the, the whole details of metrics, but uh, one key finding was that out of 46, 300 blocks, uh, only 13 blocks satisfy the main street um, metrics we, we created. Um, the main problem for the rest of blocks were uh, parking or too many chain stores. Um, also, those main street blocks were um, actually under the auto-oriented zones or um, not pedestrian friendly zones, we, which we should um, support more. Okay, so that's what I have. Thank you.